In this video, we are going to introduce a new type of polymerization um, called condensation polymerization. If you've forgotten about addition polymers, which we met in the first year of the course, perhaps you should go back and have a look through your alkenes notes and review addition polymers. So condensation polymers fall into two types. We've got um, polyesters that we're going to consider and polyamides. And the difference between condensation polymers and addition polymers is that we're going to lose a small molecule, such as water, which is where the name comes from, or hydrochloric acid, when we form the polymer. So we're going to start by looking at the first of those two types. We're going to look at polyesters. Now, if you remember from your carboxylic acids, um, you'll know how to form an ester. Esters are made by reactions of alcohols with carboxylic acids, and that would just make an ester. But for, to allow this to continue in a, con, in a long chain, a, a large molecule, we'll need to repeat that reaction over and over again. So rather than just having an um, alcohol or a carboxylic acid, we're going to have a dicarboxylic acid, di meaning two acid groups, so a dicarboxylic acid, and we're going to react that with a diol two alcohol groups. So what we can see is that we have here a carboxylic acid, we've got two carboxylic acid groups, uh, dicarboxylic acid, and in the alcohol we've got two alcohol groups. And we're going to react those two together and we're going to lose a small molecule. So you can see here that we've highlighted where there is an OH and a H that are going to condense out and we're going to form our polymer chain between these two. And then in the next one, the alcohol will lose the H and the carboxylic acid is going to lose the OH. And that's going to continue all the way down the chain. I'm just going to draw a dotted line in and then I'm going to remove it. But we can, what we're going to do is when we re remove this water molecule, we're going to form a bond between this C and this O. Those two are going to come together and that's going to be our ester bond. We're going to delete that because that's obviously not there right now. We just move down. What you can see there is that when the water has condensed out, we've created this bit here. This is the ester functional group where we've got C dual bond O, o joined to carbons on either side. So that is our ester functional group. So that's where the polyester name comes from. And then we've also could mark on here that we have an ester bond. That's this bond here between the C and the single bond O, ester bond. Now there'd be another ester bond here, joining to the next carboxylic acid, and here, joining to the next alcohol group. These are all called ester bonds. They are all going to link our esters together, making a polyester. So the monomers are joined by an ester link, an ester bond. So when this link forms, because in this case we lost water, we say a molecule of water is eliminated, the OH group is removed from the Q, the carboxylic acid, and a hydrogen atom is removed from the alcohol, the hydroxyl group of the alcohol. So this is how we would form polyester. Now polyesters have got lots of uses. They're, you'll find them in your carpet fibres. You'll find them in sports clothing, so maybe your gym kit. And you'll find them in things like shunts that they might use in medical treatment. So these are just some of the uses of polyesters. Clothing is probably one of the biggest uses of polyesters. Right, so what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at a few different polyesters now and see if we can um, work out how to draw the repeating unit, the bit of the polymer that repeats over and over again from the monomers. Now there are certain polymers that are mentioned on AQA specification, so it would be a good idea to make sure that you know the monomers associated with those polymers. And one of those is terylene. It's mentioned on the specification, and terylene is made from benzene 1,4-dicarboxylic acid. So it's got a benzene ring. Remember, that's um, a six-membered carbon ring with a circle, a pi bond in the middle. And it's got two carboxylic acid groups, two Q groups either side at 1 and 4. And it's also made from ethane 1,2-diol. So pause the video now and see if you can draw out those two 
different molecules in the monomers box. So there you go, I've drawn out a benzene ring, a little bit wonky, with the pi bond in the middle, and I've put a carboxylic acid group on numbers one and four, and then I've drawn a two carbon chain, ethane, and I've put a diol, and um, two ols, one at either end. So when we're making our monomer, what we, uh, our polymer, sorry, from our monomers, what we need to remember is that the OH of the Ku group is going to be removed. Okay, and then the H of the alcohol group is going to be removed. And then we're going to connect those two together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the top thing. I'm going to lose the group that I've highlighted. So I'm going to draw a bond. Now you must have these, what are called trailing bonds, bonds that go to the next repeating unit. So they can't just end the molecule. You need to have a bond there going off to the next unit. So I've lost the OH, go straight to the C double bond O, and then I'm going to put my benzene ring in. I to draw a hexagon, pi bond in the middle, and then I go to the next C double bondo, and again I've lost the OH, and then I'm going down to my ethane one two dial, and I'm not going to put the H in, so I go straight to the O of the ethane one two dial, and then we have a CH two, and a CH two, and another O, and then we need a trailing bond to join to the next repeating unit, and this would be a repeating unit. You do not need to draw brackets around it; you only need to do that if you're going to put a number outside the brackets, but you, it is essential that you have the trailing bonds, this sticking out bit at the end. Okay. So, pause the video again, see if you can draw propane 1 3 diol, so prop being 3, and ethane dioic acid, eth being 2 carbons. See so if you can draw those two structures in the monomers box. So there's three carbons in prop, and I've drawn the alls at numbers one and three, and there's two carbons in eth, and I've drawn the coup groups on those two carbons. So that one's a bit of a tricky one. People can often fall into a trap there and get that one wrong. So remember, it's the OH of the coup group and just the hydrogen from the alcohol. And then we're going to squish those two bits together. So it doesn't matter which of the two monomers you start with, because it's a repeating unit, it will just keep repeating. So you could start with either. I'm going to start with the alcohol this time. So I'm going to join. I'm losing the hydrogen, so I'm going to join straight to the oxygen with my trailing bond. And you can write CH2 if you don't want to draw out all those hydrogens. And then the oxygen. Again, I'm losing the hydrogen, and I'm going straight to the C double bond O because I've lost the OH to form water. And then the other C double bond O and a trailing bond. Now you might want to challenge yourself, you could pause the video and see if you can think how you would do that in a skeletal formula. And it's a little bit tricky because the trailing bonds cannot be shown that way in a skeletal formula, otherwise they just look like the end of a chain. So we'd have to do the trailing bonds a dotted line. So have a go, pause the video, and I'll show you what you should have got in a second. So there you go, if you'd have done it in skeletal formula, you see you have to use a dotted line for the trailing bond because a stick here would represent a bond to a carbon in skeletal formula, so you need to be careful. So I've used dotted lines for my trailing bonds. Alternatively, you could put the brackets around here to show that it is repeating. I'm going to work backwards on this one, so I'm going to work through this one with you. We're going to look at it. And the key thing to do is to identify the ester bond. And it's the ester bond that's the bond you've formed. So let's just go back and just have a look at these and see if we can find the ester bond. Now the ester bond is between the C double bond O and the single bond O. So this is an ester bond up here. But so is this, because this connects to the next C double bond O. And this is also an ester bond, because this would connect to the next O of the next alcohol unit. So these are all ester bonds. And these are the bonds that are forming when we make our polymers. If I go by da back down here and try and figure out where the ester bonds are, and I can see that the main ester bond is right here, and I'm going to draw a squiggly line through it because this is what I want to break. The other ester bond is in the trailing bonds, so these are the bits that I'm going to have to break, and I'm going to have to rebuild my monomers. So first of all, I'm just going to do a bit of copying without the sticks that I've broken. So that's kind of copying the first half, and the other part make sure I get the right number of zigzags, copy the second part. And then if you have a look and you remind yourself what fell off 
which part. So remember that we lost an OH from two groups, so this must have lost an OH, and we lost a hydrogen from alcohol groups. Okay. So we've drawn out um, our monomers based off of our repeating unit. So a question for you to have a look at here. It's just watching out diacyl dichloride. Now that's using acyl chlorides rather than carboxylic acid. So rather than losing an OH from a Ku group, we're going to have lost the Cl from an acyl chloride. We've still got a diol. So let's just have a look at this. Figure out where that ester bond is. Remember that the hanging bonds, trailing bonds here at the ends, these are ester bonds. And then between the cedal bondo and the single bondo, that's an ester bond. So these are our little fragments. Which one of those do we think is our diol? Now, the H falls off the alcohol, so this must be our diol, which means that this must be our coming from our diacyl dichloride. So pause the video, see if you can put the two structures in the correct boxes, and then when you unpause, hopefully, you'll see my answers and you'll see whether you've got them right or not. So there you go, we've got a diacyl dichloride, so we can see here, there's our, it, our chlorines instead of OHs, diacyl dichloride, and a diol. There's just one last little bit on these polyesters to have a go at, which is where, rather than having two separate molecules, each with the functional groups, you've got one molecule that has both the functional groups you need. So if we've got one monomer that contains both an alcohol, and a carboxylic acid, then we're going to be able to make a polymer just from that one monomer. It's going to be able to polymerize with itself. So here we're losing again the OH from the carboxylic acid and the H from the alcohol to form ester bonds at the end. So the trailing bonds, these bonds at the end, these are ester bonds. There's just no middle ester bond here because we used one monomer rather than two. So polylactic acid is an example. Now lactic acid is something that you might be familiar with. Um, it forms when uh, in your body when you get stitch. So it's what's causing the pain, lactic acid, when you get stitch. Its chemical name is 2-hydroxypropanoic acid. So if we break that name down and try to draw it, we always start with the stem of the name. So I'm going to go over to the end and draw pro. And because it says AN, I know that my carbon-carbon bonds are single. I'm going to make it into a carboxylic acid because it says propanoic acid. So I do that. Acids are always on the end. And then on number two, and you're counting back from the Ku group, one, two, you're going to put a hydroxy, which is an OH. And then what you want to do is draw in all the hydrogens. Now this can make drawing out your repeating unit a little bit more tricky because... Um, you remember we're going to lose the OH of the Q and the H of the alcohol and they're around the corner from each other in the way that I've drawn the structure. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this structure that I've drawn and I'm just going to um, redraw it with the two important functional groups out to the right and the left. So it, I'm just going to pause the video and I'm just going to redraw it and see if you can understand when you start to see the video again how I came with my new version of this model. So there you go, what I've done is um, we've got one, two, three, there's our propanoic acid and I've got the hydroxone on two but I've just rearranged it so that I've got my OH and my H out to the side so that I can make a nice easy version of the repeating unit that and then fill one though and I've got my ester bonds out to the side. The trailing bonds are the ester bonds when we've got our one monomer. So that completes our little section on polyesters um, and maybe you can find some questions to practice on polyesters. In the next video we'll start to look at polyamides.